Okay, so if you're a Mike Tomlin fan, if you're a Mike Tomlin supporter, if you're especially one of them stands who just coasts on the fact that he's never had a losing season, I suggest you shut this video off right now. Because like I said after last Thursday's game against the New England Patriots, there was a time, believe it or not, on my old channel, there was a time where I thought that I was being too hard on Tomlin. And looking back on those days now, especially after these last three games, I don't think I was hard enough on him. And yes, yeah, I'm wearing a Pirates hat in this video because, quite honestly, I don't see much of a difference between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Pittsburgh Pirates at this point because the Pirates are the direction or where the Steelers are headed. Because let me tell you, much like how the Pittsburgh Pirates, believe it or not, actually used to be a proud, prolific franchise in the MLB that craved success, craved championships, fought hard, and actually scared opponents and had their glory days of the 70s right along with the Steelers. The Steelers used to be that as well. And they're no longer that. They're a bunch of cowards. They're a bunch of bullying victims. They're a bunch of mental midgets out there. And quite frankly, just like my thumbnail says, they're a bunch of pussies. They're a bunch of soft, prima donna, sensitive, bitch-ass pussies. And, it re and it's a reflection of our pussy-ass head coach in Mike Tomlin. What's going on, everybody? I am Mac, back with another video, Sunday afternoon, just doing a follow-up to last night's embarrassing performance against the Indianapolis Colts that has dropped the Steelers to last place in the AFC North, and it's looking very possible right now that the Steelers are going to finish last in the division for the first time in 35 years. So... Like I said at the beginning, if you are a Mike Tomlin fan, I suggest you shut this video off right now. Because you want to put this guy in the Hall of Fame, right? Because he's never had a losing season. Here's the truth about Mike Tomlin with this season alone. He is a charlatan. He is a heartlet. He is a con man. All those non-losing seasons that he's had, it is just a mask a layer, and a cover-up for the millionth time on what he truly is as a head coach. He is a terrible big game head coach. He is a terrible clock management head coach. His situational football IQ sucks. He never toughens up, he never toughens up his players. He never sets them right. He never lays down the law. He plays down to competition. But at this point, can you say that he even does that? Because I don't know if we're truly worse than our opposition out there. Seeing that this team can be up 13 to nothing and somehow get outscored 30 to nothing the rest of the way, including getting shut out in the second half. His, his fundamentals about football are trash. His in-game decisions are trash. His challenges are trash. His timeouts are trash. His press game conferences are trash. I mean, I could honestly sit down here for like two hours and go on and on and on and on about how overrated, overhyped, overpraised this compiler of a head coach is. But I'll stop there. You get the point. And that could honestly be the whole video. But I'm just getting started. This season alone, Tomlin has been getting outcoached by rookie or first-year head coaches with a franchise. And last night was just the latest chapter. Want to go further into the season? How about uh, week four against Houston? He gets, to, he gets obliterated by D'Amico Ryans, who's a first-year head coach. He gets obliterated by John Gannon, first-year head coach with the Arizona Cardinals. Gets, a, gets obliterated by Shane Steichen yesterday, who's 
on his first year head coach stint with the Colts. And even though Bill Belichick's been around for quite some time now, this is the worst team that Bill Belichick's ever had, and he still out coaches Mike Tomlin. You're talking about a guy who gets destroyed by a team, not taking anything away from the Indianapolis Colts because they they are a very they are a solid team. They are a good team when you look at it in a nutshell. It's like, yeah, this team can be in the playoffs. But when you get destroyed by a team who lost their number one wide receiver in the game. Thank God he's okay, and I hope Michael Pittman's good to go again. They already did not have Jonathan Taylor for the game. They lost Zach Moss for the game, and Anthony Richardson was already out for the game. And they have a backup quarterback, again, not taking anything away from Gardner Minshew. I think he's a serviceable backup. You have a backup quarterback drop three touchdown passes on you, kind of like uh, Bailey Zappi did last Thursday night. Trey Sermon, a journeyman running back, have 88 yards on the ground. Tyler Goodson, 69 yards on the ground when he had zero touches going into last night. DJ Montgomery, the last time this guy had a catch, Hitler was still alive. You let all those things happen because you are a soft head coach who bear, who coasts on the bare minimum. And here's some more stats about Mike Tomlin for all you fanboys and girls out there. Because you want to take a look at the three head coaches that we've had since 1969? Let's see, Chuck Knoll. The longest playoff win drought that Chuck Knoll had was four seasons. From 1985 to 1988, the Steelers did not win a playoff game under Chuck Knoll. And it was understandable seeing that the Steel Curtain was gone by that point. And the Steelers were in for a short retooling session. And then we upset the Houston Oilers in the playoffs in 1989. Bill Cowher takes over in 1992. The longest the Steelers went without a playoff win under Bill under Bill Cowher was from 1998 to 2000. Again, short rebuilding stint. And then the Steelers win a playoff game again in 2001. We, did, we beat the defending champion Ravens in the playoffs that season. Okay. So when you look at it, in Chuck Knoll's 23 seasons as a head coach from 1969 to 1991, the Steelers won a playoff game in 12 of the 23 seasons. That ain't too shabby, wouldn't you say? A little over half the time the Steelers are winning a playoff game under Chuck Knoll. Bill Cowher, 1992 to 2006. That's 15 seasons. 10 of the 15 seasons, the Steelers won a playoff game under Chuck Knoll. That's now two-thirds of the time the Steelers are winning playoff games under Chuck Knoll. That's pretty solid, wouldn't you say? Now, let's take a look at Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin has eight playoff wins as a head coach. Five of them were mostly Bill Cowher's players. And five of them came in two of the three seasons in 2008 and 2010, where he had 18 out of the 23 starters in Super Bowl, or 18 out of the 22 starters in Super Bowl 43 being from Bill Cowher's teams, and then down to half of that in Super Bowl 45. So five of his eight playoff wins were thanks to Bill Cowher's players. You know, players that were intimidating, players that were tough as nails, players that went out there and they gave it their all week in and week out and they struck fear in their opponents. So that leaves Tomlin with three playoff wins. Actually, no, I'm saying it leaves him with two playoff wins. Why two? You know as well as I do that the Bengals imploded in that wild card game against us in, 20, in 2015 and they handed us that win. They had the ball under the two-minute warning after they just intercepted Landry Jones, who was in for an injured Big Ben in that game. 
and all the Bengals had to do was take knees, we would have used our three timeouts, kick a field goal to go up four points. Big Ben was going to come back regardless. You would have had about a minute to drive down the field and win the game, typically with no timeouts too. Typically a situation you lose. Instead, the Bengals run the ball. They fumble it on the very next play, and that gives us a brand new chance. Followed by Vontez Perfect and Pac-Man Jones committing the two dumbest penalties in NFL history. The Bengals handed us that game more than the Steelers won it, and Yins all know it. So that's why I say Tomlin only has two playoff wins since Super Bowl 45. Okay? Four of the 17 seasons, four of the 17 seasons, the Steelers have won a playoff game under Mike Tomlin. So now it's down to less than a quarter of the time the Steelers are winning a playoff game in Mike Tomlin's tenure. This is why Tomlin is overrated. This is why I cannot stand it when people say that he's never had a losing season. This is why I can't stand it when people say that, you know, you know, look at the, you know, just look at the team that he has right now. He's making this, he has seven wins with this team. They're all ugly wins outside of the Vegas and the Cincinnati game. It's never a convincing win. It's never a dominant win. And anytime they do win, it's either against a team that we should beat or it's because our opponent had several chances to put us away and they kept screwing up on their own. That's the Mike Tomlin era for you in a nutshell. And when you have teams this season beating us, when you have teams like the Arizona Cardinals talking smack on us a couple weeks ago after the game, they're like, oh, you guys fired Matt Canada and you still suck. That Arizona team was 2-10 and going into that game, may I remind you. When you have a Cleveland Browns depth player wiping his ass with a terrible towel after the Browns beat us, you got a Jaguars player waving around a terrible towel in our own home after they beat us. And now even Devin Bush laughing at us on social media. Wow. Do you think any of Cowers players would have tolerated that? Do you think any of Cowers players would have been like, well, we're just going to sit back and blame the officiating for why we lost. If this call went our way, we would have won. It's nothing but excuses. Instead of disrespecting yourselves and the towel and getting fired up about that, they just rather blame the officiating. And I'm telling you right now, that playoff track record of Mike Tomlin not winning a playoff game in seven seasons, which by the way is the longest playoff win drought that the Steelers have had since before the Immaculate Reception, all the way back half a century ago. That tells you all you need to know about how bad it is with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got teams bullying us. You got players laughing at us. And the team is just sulking in self-pity and defeat like the wusses that they are. That's because they take on the character of their head coach, which is Mike Tomlin. There are very few of these players on this team that deserve to don this logo. T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith, George Pickens, Jalen Warren, Pat Fryermuth, and Minka Fitzpatrick. Okay? All those players, they deserve a hell of a lot better than this crap than what's going on with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're 7-7, seven and seven, last place in the AFC North, 0-3 in the month of December, when it's supposed to be a playoff push for Ian's guys, and the Bengals won yesterday, and it's very possible that the Browns and Ravens and Bengals can keep on winning while you seriously might lose out for the rest of the season. This team does have that capability of losing out for the rest of the season and missing the playoffs and finishing in last for the first time since 1988. They do have that capability. And I wouldn't put it past them one time. 
But we know what's going to happen. Oh, I'm Art Rooney II. I'm going to bring back Mike Tomlin because he gives us the best chance at winning. He's only had one losing season in 17 seasons. That ain't making things any better, Art. It isn't. Because all you're doing is setting yourself up for the same damn movie script every single year if you bring this sack of crap Mike Tomlin back. You're up 13 to nothing on the Indianapolis Colts in the second quarter yesterday, and the Colts immediately respond. And they didn't even play perfect yesterday, okay? They played very well, but they didn't play perfect. They missed field goals. They dropped passes. They made mistakes early on in the game. They missed called plays. And they and the Steelers still couldn't stop them. You still get outscored 30 to nothing the rest of the way. Because of the hot start that you had on offense and defense. And then once you go up 13 to nothing, Tomlin's just going to sit back and go like, "Oh, well, we're up we're up multiple scores. We hit our benchmark for the season." Eh. You know what? We're good. I don't got to do it. I don't got to do anything else. Defense is just going to carry us the rest of the way. Offense, eh. They'll just perform when they feel like it. Whatever. We got this in the bag. That don't fly today in today's league, Tomlin. Your philosophy is outdated. Your philosophy don't work. Hey, man, as much as I would love for it to still be 1978, guess what? Things have changed. Things have changed. We need a head coach who understands today's philosophy in the NFL, a head coach who is tough as nails, a head coach who strives with offensive success and dominating on both ends of the ball. And yes, there are times where you can get lazy when you know that you're going to win a game. But when your opponent responds and your opponent smells blood and you're not doing anything about it, that's how chokes happen. And that's how blowing games happen. A loss last night would have gotten plenty of coaches fired. But not over here in Steeler land. Not over here. It don't get coaches fired. But apparently, Mitch Trubisky throwing a pick. That's the, the, yet another pick, I should say. Apparently to Tomlin, that's the the camel that broke the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back with Mitch Trubisky. Oh no, not the fact that we lost back-to-back home games in less than a week to two teams that had two wins on the season, teams that are just ending the season. No, 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 no. That ain't the straw that broke the camel's back to make a change. No, another interception by Mitch Trubisky was. What an absolute middle finger that was to Mason Rudolph yesterday. And then you you don't elect a punt, or you elect a punt on that fourth down, down 24 to 13, when you know that Chris Boswell can hit a field goal from 55 plus, he's done that several times. I mean, Lucas Oil Stadium is a dome for fuck's sake. And you elect to punt it? And Tomlin says, oh, not a lot went our way to kick a field goal for the game. So um, we didn't. I didn't really want to take that risk with Chris Boswell. You're in a fucking dome, man. Yeah, he missed the extra point early on in the game. But there's zero excuse to shy away from Chris Boswell because of one missed extra point. When also Chris Boswell is your leading scorer, essentially. And you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know he can hit a field goal from 55 plus, And that would have been a 57 yarder. So why are you shying away from him? Why did you make that decision? I mean, after all, this is the same guy who used an x-ray machine as an excuse for not putting Big Ben back in the game against the Raiders all the way back in 2018. Even though he was fucking cleared the play. This this is who we have as a head coach. This is who we have. Oh, but if you fire the guy, who are you going to replace? If you fire the guy, he's going to get hired immediately. Let it happen. Let it happen. Because Tomlin's philosophy is not good for this team. It doesn't work. 
And you know, you can put what you want it for this season. Yes, our quarterback situation is shit. Our offensive line is shit. Our inside linebacker situation is crap. It's been incredibly bad this year. Our secondary's been busted this year outside of Minka Fitzpatrick. And yes, we have had a ton of injuries this season. But any way you slice and dice it this season, it is a reflection of Mike Tomlin. That's what it all boils down to at the end of the day. Michael Petaway Tomlin, the most overrated coach in the NFL. The most overrated head coach in NFL history. That's what it all boils down to. And I know I'm going to get these comments. Well, you're a spoiled Steeler fan if you think that. Really? How am I spoiled? How am I spoiled? Because I had a Hall of Fame quarterback? Because I got the privilege of seeing top 10 defenses most years? How am I spoiled when this is the longest playoff win drought that the Pittsburgh Steelers have had since before the Immaculate Reception happened and they've coasted with nine wins the majority of the time that Mike Tomlin's been head coach? How the fuck am I spoiled? That's what it is. The culture, the new standard, the new norm. Okay? It's one thing if you're a fan of a franchise that's never won a Super Bowl. Like if you're a Browns fan, if you're a Bengals fan, if you're a Lions fan, if you're a Jags fan, if you're a Vikings fan, you don't want to sit back and go like, well, we won nine games on the season, it was a fun season. Whether it's fair or not, when you're a franchise like the Steelers, like the Patriots, like the Packers, like the 49ers, like the Cowboys, like the Giants, if you are a fan of those franchises who have Super Bowl success and crave that championship success, guess what? Your expectations are up a notch and your standards are set higher than just winning nine games. And this absolute buffoon, Mike Tomlin, it don't, it don't register in between here. Because that's what he settled for. He's given up. He's quit. And just like him, that's what the team did last night. No way this team deserves the playoffs. And if you think they deserve the playoffs, you are not watching the games or you are straight up lying to me and yourself. And that's all I got to say for this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I am Mac, checking on out for the day. Have a good one, everybody.